So influenza virus is a respiratory illness that affects people all around the world. Around 10 to 15 percent of every single person, uh, the whole world's population, get infected with flu every year, causing maybe half a million deaths each year just from seasonal flu alone. And then, of course, every few decades, we have one of these explosive pandemics where the people that get affected by that tend to be young adults. Uh, the virus sweeps through the world very rapidly. And for all of those reasons, we need to have good control measures. We need to understand the virus. We need to know how it replicates inside the body, why it causes disease, and how it spreads from one infected host, be it human or animal, to the next. Ferrets are used widely in flu research. Um, they are naturally susceptible to the same viruses as humans are. And that's really important because it means that they're a good animal model. We don't have to adapt the virus or change it in any way. You can take the same virus out of a person's nose that's making them sick and inoculate it into a ferret and it will replicate in the ferret cells in the nose of the ferret. Um, we also like to use ferrets for flu because they do actually show similar clinical signs to the sorts of symptoms we see in people. So the ferrets will get uh, an upper respiratory tract infection, they'll get a mild fever, um, they'll feel lethargic, at least we think they do because they curl up in their cage, they'll have a runny nose and a cough, uh, they'll sneeze towards the end of the infection as well. Um, the virus is a tiny, fragile particle really that just contains its genome uh, and in order to infect a person the virus needs to gain access uh, to the cells of the body, the upper respiratory tract. When it's replicated in that first person, in order to survive really, the virus has to come out from that person and into the next. And for flu, um, that is usually through droplets that are breathed out into the air. And they will survive as small droplets in the air until somebody else breathes them in and takes them into their respiratory tract. And then the virus has access to the cells in their respiratory tract. So that transmission process, transmission through the air, we understand is really key to the ability of a virus to spread and cause these outbreaks of seasonal flu and pandemics. We use ferrets to study that because we can infect one ferret with a strain of human flu. Uh, we can place a second animal in a room uh, sharing the same air but not necessarily in the same cage and we can see that the ferrets themselves breathe out the virus in their droplets of air and, and can pass the virus from one animal to the next. At the moment it's really difficult to recapitulate that experiment using cell cultures. Uh, you, you sort of really do need one animal to produce the virus and one animal to receive it if you're going to study the entire process. But we are working on uh, methods to break the process down and at least remove some of the animals. For example, we've recently been successful with funding from NC3Rs to um, replace the sentinel animals, the ones that are going to receive the virus, with cell culture dishes. And we've got a, a new piece of equipment that we've designed which uh, we can place one infected animal in and then the air from that animal is passed over the surface of susceptible cell cultures and then we can read out whether those cell cultures get infected by the virus and that is a semi in vitro, semi cell culture method for studying transmission. When we're going to infect ferrets with our known sample of influenza virus we dilute the virus down so that we're only putting a small number of infectious particles into the animal because that's really what would happen uh, to a, a, an animal or a person naturally acquiring the virus. And then we lightly anaesthetize the ferret and just place a small droplet of a solution containing the virus into their nose. Um, they sort of breathe that in quite naturally while they're lightly under anaesthetic. Uh, and that virus in the liquid has access to the cells of the upper respiratory tract, which are the target cells that the virus is going to infect and initiate the infection with. If we use a reasonably low dose of virus, one that we think represents the type of dose you would get exposed to in natural exposure, the animals don't get very sick at all. Um, we can see uh, that they have, after three or four days, um, a crusty nose, sometimes a, a runny nose, uh, and sometimes when we walk into the room we can hear them sneezing. Generally speaking, with a human influenza, a sort of typical seasonal strain, much like an average person, a ferret given a normal dose won't, won't get terribly sick. 
So we're very interested in how transmission happens. Uh, there are two aspects that we've recently been excited about. One is the timing of transmission. So um, because we can monitor each day how much virus is present in the nose and whether or not that virus is successfully being aerosolized and making it across into the next animal, we can see that transmission, at least in our ferrets, happens very early. In fact, transmission from one animal to the next happens most efficiently in the very early days, one or two, after we've first infected the, the donor animal. We've shown that the, the timing of transmission absolutely correlates with the ability of the, the, the virus to come out into the air and float in the air for, for enough time to survive. And that's of course in ferrets. What we now want to do is to also move across into humans and ask whether that, that's also the case in humans because that would be very reassuring that, that, that the ferret kinetics are telling us the same. And we've got some exciting plans to be able to, to do that, um, to actually uh, infect human volunteers with doses of flu and get them to breathe into the same piece of equipment and ask at what day after their infection are they most contagious. Influenza virus is a difficult virus to control and work with um, out there in the community because it changes all the time. It's uh, always evolving. And even if we have a vaccine one year, which protects people against the viruses that are out there, uh, the following year, the viruses will have evolved and changed. We call that process drift. So we're very interested in studying how that evolution happens. And in order to do that, there are a number of parameters we need to know about. One is when the virus is transmitted from one host, ferret or human, to the next, um, how many virus particles actually do make it across and initiate infection in the next host? Because that has a big bearing on how fast something can evolve. We call that sort of like a bottleneck. If there are only one or two viruses that initiate the infection, there could be a very tight bottleneck and that would have big implications. So we've been working on that using um, our ferret model, we can infect one animal with a mixture of viruses that we can count very easily and then we can expose the next animal uh, to that infected animal and we can ask, does the whole mixture come across? And if it did, that would mean that a lot of viruses must move across, statistically speaking. Or in the, in the animal that catches influenza from the, the one that's in the adjacent cage, are there just only one or two types of the viruses that we originally put into the first animal? Incredibly, it looks as if only a handful of virus particles are enough to initiate infection in the next animal. Humans are protected from flu if they need to be protected from flu by using vaccines. All children aged two to three years old are being taken now to their GPs for a live attenuated flu vaccine every year. Uh, and also some of the primary school children uh, are receiving it in some pilot studies that are being run. And actually, the point here is that the children aren't really at a massive risk themselves. If they get flu, they'll get sick, but, but not so bad. But the point is that they are going to be protected against um, the virus in the community and won't bring it home to mum, dad, or more importantly, granny or grandpa, who really are at risk. And in the pilot areas so far, that looks incredibly effective. All of those vaccines rely on ferrets, actually, for their generation. It's very interesting, but because we know that ferrets are susceptible to human viruses, they make antibodies after they've been infected with flu, and the serum that, that contains those antibodies is used uh, by the World Health Organization every year to try to predict whether or not we need to update the flu vaccine for the following year or not. So ferrets are absolutely key because they're susceptible to all the same viruses as us and because they make antibodies in the same way that we do, they're absolutely key to our ability to actually make vaccines and protect people.